So after I got married, myself and Evan and our little doggy moved back in with my parents because we bought a house which I'm so proud of and, you know, excited for, but we have to renovate it and we are so lucky that we were able to move back in with my parents and it's, I'm so grateful for it because I don't really know what we would have done if we couldn't, but I think it's made me like reflect on the last five years because I'm back here like the last time I lived here in this house end of 2019 I had just turned 30 I was probably about to come into like the biggest year of my career with it gals we had just come off doing two sold out shows in Vicker Street we were going to go into doing another one we um we're at the top of our game really so it's so weird being back here and reflecting on that Evan and I had been going out about a year we were just about to move in obviously no one had an idea that what right around the corner was COVID and Evan and I had a really intense year that year we moved in and then six weeks later or eight weeks I guess lockdown happened (laughs) we got engaged at the end of that year since then obviously um I'm no longer in it gals I'm in a very different I feel a very different space in my career I'm so fulfilled with what I do with Red Room um I love 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 doing Red Room but there is it's a different it's a different kind of scene I want to say podcasting has changed so much as well um there's a lot more competition and there is a lot more you have to keep on top of things and relevancy and the internet it's all changed so much and I think sometimes being back somewhere where you were right before something peaked really makes you reflect on things I've been kind of feeling a bit lost in terms of my my place in the internet which sounds very strange but when you work online kind of it's like your place in the industry you know I adore my podcast and I'll never stop that but I think with everything else I just get a bit lost sometimes and sometimes I can feel like you know it can feel like everyone's getting all these opportunities around me and that you can feel like old news very quick and I don't know I'm trying to figure out for myself whether that's just a period of reflection that I'm in because I'm back here um, do I feel like I'm in a bit of state of limbo or just moving back in my parents has it brought on feelings of like taking a step backward where it shouldn't I guess I'll know when we move into our house and maybe that will be a whole new beginning for me but yeah I wanted to make this video to reconnect with everyone I hope you're all doing well and I hope you enjoy it hello I recorded this video already which a lot of you guys might have seen uh, on my Instagram but you know what the video kept like it wouldn't like leave my head or something do you, do you know that way like I just couldn't I was like oh no I do need to make that video because making the video the first time inspired inspired me to maybe start a new YouTube series no it won't be a vlog okay unfortunately the vlogging days yes my microphone is on a comb <laughs> the vlogging days I don't want to say are done I just have no urge sometimes I feel with some types of content I put it out there and I'm happy to put a lid on it <laughs> I would I would do a vlog if I was going on a fabulous holiday but I'm in the middle of a very expensive home renovation so I don't think that's going to be happening anytime soon I want to talk today about friendship I asked for your questions your friendship I thought it'd be nice it'd be fun to talk about friendship I always I get asked this in like roundabout ways and I also think that it's always quite a popular topic especially at the age I am I'm in my 30s a lot of my viewers are in and around my age maybe a little bit younger so kind of big sister advice hopefully I can help 
and hopefully my answers are as good as the version that didn't record. I have all my questions on my computer. Number one, do you ever crave being single again in a long-term relationship and is that normal? So I don't know whether you're asking me personally or like, is it like the royal you? (laughs) But anyway, I think like the thing is about like singledom is that it's not only a state like a relationship state right it's not only a like i have a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a partner or whatever else it's a lot of that but it's not only that because a lot of being single is this kind of state of mind and level of accountability to someone else so you know a huge thing in a relationship and i always remember the first time i broke up with someone my first ever serious boyfriend when we broke up my biggest like this relief came over me that I was like oh my god I don't have to answer to anyone anymore like I don't have to text someone and be like hey I'm just home like what are you doing and my weekends aren't kind of already signed away like there is a weird thing in a relationship that you're like oh my weekends are like we will spend the weekend together whether you live together or whether you are um just seeing each other like there is that kind of expectation on you and I've always felt that in relationships so I think if you're craving those things I think there's levels of normality to it and levels of abnormality I think it's normal to miss those things miss the freedoms you have from being single while also being happy in a long-term relationship because there's just different levels of your life that you might mourn here or there But if you're missing just like fucking other people and you want to be in like a monogamous relationship, then it might be, I don't know, it might be time to rethink, (laughs) rethink that moment in your life. But I do think it's normal to miss some aspects of being single, like to miss the, you know, if you're talking to your friend who's single and they're like in that fun kind of talking phase or like getting to know someone. Because as I said, like there's things you mourn when you're in a relationship. And even as the relationship evolves with someone, you have to mourn different eras. But I think the healthiest thing for you is to not get stuck in that mindset just always thinking to yourself like okay yeah we don't have that anymore but there's no point in like lamenting on that too long because when you're in a relationship it's really annoying honestly if someone just keeps bringing up like remember we used to be remember we used to it's like yeah but we used to that's it full stop you know um yeah we used to be all over each other 24 7 yeah we used to like get butterflies when we saw each other walking down the street or when our names popped up on each other's phone but like those just aren't realistic things that you're always going to have. You might have moments of that. Like it's not gone forever. I don't like, I think if you're constantly thinking in the past and constantly thinking and lamenting on things that the way they used to be, that's how you're going to get stuck in the past and you're not going to be able to enjoy the present. If you're stuck in the past, you can't enjoy the present. Okay. Next question. Why do adult friendships suck 90% of the time? We've lost that connection we once had everyone flakes out and she says that she is 28 so that age 20 it's like a Saturn return kind of age like 27 to 32 is it's almost like a puberty (laughs) it's almost like a puberty for like your friendships and your life like it's another phase in your life right it's like when you leave secondary school and go into college that is like an evolution of life of into adulthood into more independence um when you're in your later 20s coming into your 30s your friend situations tend to change a lot and with that comes your friendships changing a lot at the period i am my life right now like a lot of my friends are having kids or getting pregnant or buying houses and that's a change as well especially as someone who doesn't have children like that is a change for me because it's like oh a lot of my friends aren't like available to see them how I used to be so it's like we have to fi- re-navigate that friendship which is fine that's just is what it is you have to re-navigate things but it's kind of like what I said just in the last question like you can't be lamenting on how things used to be because that's how things used to be when you're in your early 20s I feel it's, you know, it's a really accessible thing to be able to like hang out. Like I don't like, I don't hang out with my friends anymore. Like 
I called into my friend Fiona last week and we had coffee. That was kind of as close as the hangout's going to be. You know, I'm with her son and we're chatting about our house renovation. <laughs> like it's all very in your thirties coded. Um, but that's just the reality of it, you know, because situations change in your life. So if you are with a group of friends and you find that like, you know, well, you know, when we were in our twenties, we used to hang out. We used to go on girls holidays. We used to be on the phone all night. It's not that like you have to give up those things as you get older. Definitely not. Like you still might have some friendships that are like that. But if you, you're noticing your group of friends moving on from that phase of life, it could be time to almost mourn that and be like, okay, we're moving into the next era of our friendship. And we just don't have that time to, you know, make our monthly girls lunch or whatever. I'm probably not the best person to really talk on this because I've never personally been like in like a group of girls or been in that kind of friendship where there's an expectation of how many times we meet or how many times we talk. I'm more of a one-on-one kind of girl, which is easier to navigate the friendship because we're only relying on like me and them. My best friend is still besties with my ex that cheated on me. It was years ago, but we now live together and it's weird cause she's always on the phone to him. That's fucking awkward. So I guess I'd need a little bit more context because it's like, were they friends before you guys were dating? I'm presuming so, because that would be even weirder if someone was like friends with your ex-boyfriend, but they weren't friends before you guys dated. I think with the whole like staying with friends with someone like, or with an ex, especially if it's like this situation where like, I'm presuming you guys all knew each other before you guys dated, broke up, he cheated on you that's awkward is like that it's sometimes unspoken that like there's an expectation on one person and if my presumption is right and like you've never really said it to her how is she supposed to know that it's an issue other than maybe like slight awkwardness between the two of you which can build tension and it's probably also a thing of like you you said that you just moved in with each other so I'm presuming that it's like only really you're only really seeing how close they are now maybe or how much they talk and that would be really hard like having your friend speak to your ex while you're there I think this is just a classic case of like you needing to have that conversation with your friend because I'm presuming you haven't it sounds like you haven't and you're not going to be able to have the expectation she's going to stop being friends with them because if if as I think you said it was years ago right She's not going to stop being friends with this guy now because, as you said, it was years ago. They clearly have built their own independent friendship. Um, And I don't think you want them to be not friends. It's more the, like, speaking on the phone with him. Is he in your apartment? Like, maybe have that conversation with her that you're like, look, I don't care that you're friends with him. I knew you were friends with him. um, But I just, you know, the constantly being on the phone to him while we're in the apartment, him coming over to the apartment, me hearing about him constantly, it's a little bit of an, like, it's just a bit annoying. (laughs) And I think a lot of people would understand that she, if I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt, maybe she's not fully aware that it's, it's an uncomfortable thing for you because it was a long time ago. And maybe she needs to be reminded slightly. Like maybe sometimes people do need to be reminded of like, like that's happened to me before where someone's like why can't you guys just find you know like a a middle ground or maybe you guys can be okay again and it's like okay have you not do you not remember a b c and d so sometimes it's not about the person you know like it's not about the ex it doesn't mean that you're still hung up on your ex it can just be like for want of a better word triggering how do i handle overbearing friends (laughs) um i'm the kind of person i'm almost what I need from a friendship is almost so low maintenance that I feel it can be poor friendship behavior on my own behalf. I am the type of friend that like, I need so little from you that like it it probably borders on not being a very good friend. Like I can genuinely for some of my friends not hear from them for like a long time. Okay. And I don't care. Um, it's fine. 
or sometimes I won't even realize it until they actually say like, oh my God, we haven't seen this since November. And I'm like, oh my God. Now some friends, I would notice it. You know, there's just different relationships with different friends, but overbearing friends for me, like me and an overbearing friend just, just, we do not mix. Like I've had friends who've had that expectation on me before of like, you don't do this or like, I didn't hear from you then or like blah, 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 blah. Like, and I just, it, it actually put, like sends, sets off my fight or flight, which is definitely a me issue, you know, it shouldn't. <laughs> like, I feel like I have that more in like friendships than I do in relationships. I don't have it in relationships at all. I've never really had that thing of like fear of commitment or anything like that. But with a friendship, I do have a bit of a fear of commitment, a bit of fear of like dedication. And oh my God, like now you're going to expect me to be like, I think it's more of an emotional thing, like a, an emotional drain. I've always felt friendships to be, they can be a little bit um, emotionally draining. And I don't know whether that's because of the people that I've had friendships with in the past or like the kind of people that I'm drawn to maybe. Um, but I have found the odd time to be a little bit drained from friendships. Is that a terrible thing to admit? Like sometimes I feel like I admit too much on these videos or like when I, especially when I talk about friendship and sometimes I can like hear the people judging me in like my mind's eye or whatever. But what I'm trying to say is I totally understand and I can empathize with your frustration with an overbearing friend. Um, sometimes it's more of a like you understanding you than what are you going to do? Like it's it's a very hard one to navigate with the friend itself because it's like, what are you going to do? Be like, you're being overbearing. <laughs> that doesn't go down well with people. OK, and I've sometimes been like I've. I've picked up the wrong cue at times where I've been like thought that things like that were okay to say to people and it really hurts people's feelings it's not really a conversation you can have with people because that's just how they are in a friendship what I would do is more so like pick and choose my times to be available to those people like sometimes you just have to set a standard even if it is a low standard of like the kind of friend that you can be for someone like not being at their beck and call all the time with every text message, not being their person. Like my biggest issue in friendships, not biggest, just more, but one of my issues in friendships is like allowing myself to be their crisis person. Um, cause I am a bit of a fixer. Like I do like to, if someone has an issue, I try to fix it immediately. Um, and I try and be better at that in my day-to-day -day life by not immediately going to fixing things and trying more so to listen to people. Um, but it is kind of my, it's kind of my go-to in the way that I deal with things to be like, okay, solutions, like let's get this fixed. And because I'm like that, I've had it in the past where friends, I can be their like crisis person where like if something happens, they come to me and then therefore I feel really overwhelmed I get really socially and emotionally drained and it's just not really a fun time for a friendship like we're not having a lot of fun I'm more like your fucking therapist and then sometimes those kinds of people can become a little bit reliant on you also probably doing a little bit of self-critique of like what is it that's being overbearing like are you finding it hard to be emotionally there for people are you being a little distant? Are you, is that a thing within yourself? Like, and that doesn't mean that you have to change or like force yourself to do anything you don't like. But like, I think we've all been that kind of, well, maybe we haven't all been, but if you're a bit more introverted like me, like sometimes you just have to fucking force yourself to go to the event or go to the lunch or go to the dinner. It might not be the thing that you want to do in your forefront of your mind, but like sometimes it's like, just get out of your own head and just go. And I've done that before. I can be like, they're being overbearing. And it's like, they're not, they're just asking you to go to lunch with them. Like just go to fucking lunch with them or like pick up the phone and call them. I feel like my friend has apologized for something she did for the sake of apologizing and not because she understands my point of view or cares. She defended her actions, but just made it about her in the end. She apologized, but it just doesn't feel genuine. We've all given apologies that we don't fully mean. And I think no, whenever that happens, it's felt two ways. Like we've all, we've all given one and we've all got one. Okay. And when you get one, you're kind of, you kind of know. And sometimes when you get those false apologies, it's okay. Sometimes you're just like, okay, fine. Like, let's just move on. I wanted to just hear the words you know it hurt my feelings. Maybe you're not fully sorry, but like, let's move it on. But sometimes, 
And in this instance, it sounds like it, it ain't okay. Sometimes it's very frustrating when you are genuinely trying to tell someone how you feel, how they've hurt you, how they've wronged you. And sometimes people just know how to apologize. And that doesn't mean that they mean it. And it doesn't mean that they are sorry or that they've heard you. They just know the, what's the word? Like the kind of the recipe to an apology. They know how to be like, look, I did this and I did that. And I am sorry. And you know, they're not because they've probably apologized before to you. That's usually what happens. They've apologized before. And you know that they're good at it and that they don't mean it. The odd time there will be an instance where someone has apologized and you feel that you haven't been heard and you have to bring it up again. Um, Sometimes you have to be like, look, I feel like we had that kind of conversation about our fight and I know you apologized and I appreciate your apology, but I still kind of feel like you haven't heard me. Now you can bring that up max one more time. Okay. Cause you can't be that person. Cause it is annoying as well. That is constantly bringing up a fight that we've already had and that I've already apologized to you for. That's going to cause another argument. So sometimes you just have to like square the circle in your own head where you're like, okay, on a scale to one to 10, how much did she mean her apology? If it was like an eight, can I get over it? If it was a two, I'll bring it up again. But what are my expectations here? Like if it was a two and I'm bringing it to my friend and saying, look, I don't feel like you heard me. Am I expecting her to give me a better apology this time? And what if she doesn't? You know, you have to know how you are going to act if she doesn't. What I would suggest to you is going to this friend, telling them how you feel, but like practicing how you're going to say it to them. That's different to the last time because there could be a communication error. error. Also, I learned this in therapy. If you've been in therapy, I'm sure you've heard this too. Use like words that are ownership to you. Like, I feel like I did not explain myself correctly and therefore I don't feel like you really understood my point of view, okay? Don't be like, you, 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 you don't get this. And that's not saying that like it's not their fault. It's just like, it's not an effective way to communicate, to be pointing the blame on people and telling other people that like everything is wrong because they're just gonna go in on the defense. So if you say like, you know, I feel that maybe I didn't get my pro- my point across correctly or I didn't verbalize how you hurt me because within your response I personally didn't really buy it you know so that would be my my suggestion is you're just gonna have to say it where it's gonna be awkward but you also only have in my opinion that could be again unpopular you only have one chance to do that because again there has to be a point also where we all just move it on I had an awkward situation with a friend where we both got annoyed, said some things and apologized, but I can't stop thinking about it and still feel hurt. The whole thing was blown out of proportion and I don't know how to move on. Okay, similar situation. And it is one of those awkward things in friendships where it's like, we had a heated argument. We said some shit we didn't mean, but I can still remember you calling me a nasty bitch. Oh my God, I forgot there's a part two of this question, which adds to it though, hold on. So. I'm also getting married and she hates my other close friend, which she keeps making known. So if I was, didn't have that second caveat, I would just be like, look, sometimes we just say things we don't mean and it takes time to get over things and blah, 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 blah. That second caveat, it kind of tells me all I need to know about this person. She's giving toxic. And I know that's a real jump to make about like I literally got one sentence on her but there's nothing worse to me than people who when they argue go for the jugular and say things that are just sometimes there's no coming back from like why did you do that like because because the way that my mind is wired I won't come back I'll remember you said that about me I don't hold things like against people in the sense that like I don't store information to use it against someone at further notice it's actually a real pet peeve of mine where I've had friend fights with friends before right and they've said things that I'm like oh my god you how are you bringing that up now like nine years later you're bringing this up or like 
they'll bring up something you said that was maybe like in a conversation that had nothing to do with what the fight is about. And it's like, why is that in your head? Like the way that you store information to use as ammunition against me, that freaks me out. And I've had friends like that in the past and it's a real red red flag for me now. People really show you who they are when they have an argument. And that doesn't mean that like, I'm not a perfect person. Neither are you. Like we all say things we don't mean when we argue. If someone says shit like that to me, I'll fucking clap back at them. And it's not that I can't clap back. Oh, I can. But like, I try to not. It doesn't, it's just, to be honest, it's just not really where my mind goes when I'm arguing um, with someone. So it kind of makes me feel that I'm like, did she go in more? Because it sounds like she's like a very vocal person. Like, I just can't imagine like telling my friend that I hate their friend who's going to be at the wedding. Why would I do that? Like, that's so weird. Like, fair enough. We're not all going to like each other's friends. We're not all going to be like best friends with everyone's fucking bridesmaid. But like, why would I be telling my friend who's getting married, like, and your friend Jane? Yeah, I don't like her. She annoys me. She's mean to me. Unless like we've had actual beef and she's done something to me. But even then, like, you're getting married and she's going to be there. It makes me very, it make, very much makes me feel like she wants you feeling awkward or she wants you off or like she's trying to make it about her. She's trying to get the attention onto her. So I will say as someone who got married and like recently had like a big friendship breakup, like it's going to sound really harsh, but it just is where I am in my life. Like I couldn't be happier that my friends who were at that wedding went through all of that with me and saw me through the other side and you know have been friends of mine for so long and we've never had those kinds of issues ever that I did have with old friends I ne- never for a second did I have to fear any of my friends that were at the wedding were going to make it about them make me feel awkward make me feel on the defense, make me feel kind of wary or not knowing how they're going to react or what they're going to say. And that was a great thing for me. It was such a nice feeling knowing that all those people there, that I could trust them, right? So if you've got someone, this is giving like someone you can't really trust because you can't trust her to make you feel good going into your wedding, which is... It's a pretty low bar for a friend. So I hate to say like, (laughs) rethink your whole friendship, but maybe give it a thought. My new boyfriend's best friend cheated on his soon to be wife with my best friend. We all met on holiday and he said he was single. He got with my bestie and it wasn't until three or four months in that my boyfriend told me his friend was getting married in two months. I haven't told my friend I'm not welcome at the wedding and I'm mega salty. Ooh, okay, where to start? Do you have to tell your friend? I think you should just for her own, like she's gonna find out, I would presume. Maybe not though, because maybe she doesn't follow this guy on Instagram, but she's probably gonna find out. So I would tell her just so she can get her own story straight just in case shit pops off. Secondly to this, which I think is the main issue. Your boyfriend's friend group have very low standards. I understand that shit happens. I don't really agree with the whole like, what happens on a trip, like on a holiday, whether it's a guy or a girl, like it's like, you're just on holiday, babes. Like, (laughs) it's not Mad Max or The Purge. Like you just went to Mallorca. Doesn't mean you can go around fucking people and like, you know, you've got a fiance at home. Like, just because you're in Spain (laughs) doesn't mean the rules are any different. You're not going to a different galaxy. Like, this isn't interstellar, you know? You're not like, okay, I might not come back for 300 years. Like, no, 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 no. You're coming back next Thursday, babes. So whether you cheated over there, whether you cheated in Dundrum Shopping Centre, you still cheated. So I don't know why the fuck people do it when they're just on holidays. I understand, like, they... And also, like, to do it with, like, girls in Dublin who are also from... I don't know if you're from Dublin, but, like, girls from their city pretty stupid but like I would be really uncomfortable finding out like if 
one of Evan's friends, while he was on a trip with them, slept with anyone but their partner. Because that makes me think, like, in my mind, and maybe I'm paranoid, but my mind, that makes me be like, oh, so that behavior is accepted and covered up because you only told me much later that your friend is engaged. And now you are in the awkward position where even if you're like, look, you're not going to the wedding. Thank God you're not going to the wedding. What the fuck were you going to do with that wedding? Clap as she walks down the aisle to some guy that rode your best friend while you were on holidays? And if you are the one who has to like keep the secret, I would be enraged. So I don't know, like sometimes people tell you who they are in roundabout ways. And I'm not saying you're like, I don't know how your boyfriend reacted, but like, he kind of kept it from you. I know you're not going out that long, but like, I would not be comfortable with that. I would not be comfortable knowing that my partner has a group of friends where that kind of behavior is normalized, where it is completely fine for them to walk down the aisle with someone a few months later. And to the point where like, now you are in this position where you're like, okay, I'm not welcome at the wedding. I don't know why you're not welcome, but I can imagine it's maybe because the groom knows that you know a secret of his. Now you're in this like awkward thing with your relationship. I don't know. I'm not saying rethink your relationship, but I'm kind of saying, kind of saying rethink the relationship, girl. My friend is engaged to a proven compulsive liar and unemployed man. Stage an intervention or leave her to it. Leave her to it, girl. You know, like you're just going to be the bitch. There's fucking no point. If there's one thing I've learned in my 34 years on this planet, and I'm still learning it, I'm still learning it. As I said, I am a bit of a fixer and that's not a good thing. Like it's annoying because I've had fixers when I come to them and I'm like, I don't, I'm not looking for a solution. I'm just looking for help. Sometimes, most of the time, 99% of the time, your friends are just going to date who they're going to date. Okay. There's no point in you getting involved. You can hate them all you want. They'll make their own decision. I've made this mistake plenty of times disliking someone's partner, thinking that they need to know, thinking that I have to be the one to tell them. It's a huge mistake of mine. It's a character flaw of mine. And just learn from me. Don't do it. If you don't like your boyfriend, guess what? (laughs) Nine times out of 10, they dump you and not the boyfriend. (laughs) I've also been the girl who's like, friends don't like the boyfriend. And let me tell you, it's really annoying just because you're like, okay, well, I'm still going to go out with him. So like, now I can't talk about him. Now it's awkward between us. Like, it's probably just one of those things where it's like, just listen to her, like, let it play out as it's going to play out. If he's a proven compulsive liar, that's going to come out. Okay. Let the relationship play out. She'll figure it out herself. Just be her friend and be there for her through the shit show. Because it probably will be a shit show. How to deal with a friend who stays with someone that hates you and has done you dirty. Mm, I don't like this. I don't like, I don't think that like everyone has to drop everyone, but there's, there has to be a line, right? Like that's what I don't understand. I'm like, where is your line? Sometimes I feel like saying that to people, like, where is your line of expectation? Because if they treated me like that, they're going to treat you like that. Or they at least have the capability of, and you know, the ins and outs of it. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, you know, what shit happened. You know, what happened in the past between me and that person. And there, there does come a a time where like them hanging out with them is endorsing it. I feel that's possibly, you know, I've been told in the past that that's maybe too much to expect from people, but I don't think so. Cause I just think that like, if I've had a friend who was a really close friend of mine and another one of our friends really fucked them over, like really fucked them over. I'm not talking about like they had a fight once, blah, blah, blah. Like really fucked them over. I don't think I'd be able to look at the other person the same again, you know? Never mind hang out with them. So I understand like keeping cordial with people being like look I'm not going to get on their bad side that's all fine that's all completely fine you know you always have to remember that like 
that's also a humbling thing that you do have to come to terms with that like just because you don't like someone doesn't mean that everyone's going to drop them doesn't mean that everyone's going to be like fuck them even if they do know everything but your best friends your closest friends people who are there for you have been through with you through the bullshit they should have some standards again it doesn't mean that like you expect them to spit on the person's shoes as they pass them on the street but like i'd expect you not to be going for brunch with them you know say hi to them if you bump into them grand but like texting them all the time i don't know again it's one of those things you have to let the person know though because not everyone can guess you're gonna have to be like look i i find it really uncomfortable that you're friends with them and you're gonna have to hear them out and see what they say maybe they're not as close as you think they are but at the end of the day again it's like that girl people are going to just do what they're going to do um my last one is a screenshot because it was a long one let me see i used to always think of myself as quite a good friend but since leaving secondary school over 10 years ago every close friend i've had has eventually ended the friendship and i mean actually ended it like i don't want to be friends with you anymore not just quietly drifting away i'm so lucky and grateful to still have a solid core group from school and naturally they are my closest friends but it still makes me feel quite insecure as I get older and find that I have serious trouble maintaining friendships in my adult life. Have you any advice? Please keep it anonymous. Probably something I should bring up with my therapist, but here we are. Look, girl. Obviously, I've recorded this video for the second time, so I'm not going to do the hemming and hawing that I did last time. I, I know the answer here. If you have your core group of friends, what are you bothering with new friends? That's a joke. Kind of. I'm kind of like, oh, the last thing I need is new friends. If they happen, they happen. You know what I mean? I just don't need to be out there looking for new friends. Like, if you've got people that get you, it's like, come on. Like, let's just let's just stick to what we know here, you know? It's very awkward that they keep ending being friends with you, though. And I hate to, like, push the blame on you. I really do. It's not blame. I would probably, if that happened to me multiple times, I have to say, I would go to my good friends. I would go to my best of those good friends, the ones who know me the most, and I would be like, girl, why do you think they're doing this to me? Because <laughs> they're going to know you. <laughs> they are going to know who you are. They are going to know your faults, your good points. They're going to know your weaknesses as a friend, and they've probably forgiven you for a lot of them. So like, it's not going to be one of those things where they're like, yeah, you are a flake. You know, they're going to be like, look, Jenny, like, for example, if it's me, like, we know that you are not really that social of a person. So, you know, we're grand with it, but other people maybe aren't. So I would do that first. If you haven't heard from the people themselves as to why they stopped being friends with you. It's not that it's a you issue. It's not that like there's definitely something that you have done. We've all had it where like, if you've stopped being friends with someone that maybe aren't friends with you like your old old friends or at least i have okay where you've stopped being friends with someone and then you've come to them being like oh we're not friends anymore and sometimes the people who know you the best the people who know you the longest and the people that have been there through, through, through with you through all the bullshit are like oh thank god i hated them and you're like what they were so fun they were amazing and we were best friends and then your friends can be like no they were not it they were toxic they bitched about you they did this they did that like like i in the past and this is not just pointed for any reason anyone individual this has happened to me in multiple times okay i've in the past gone for very toxic friendships i don't know what it is like i've never i had a toxic relationship but i've never been that kind of person who's like been drawn to toxic like romantic relationships i think just because my first one was so bad that i've just been like oh like such a good red flag monitor but i don't have a good red flag monitor to friendships um i can put up, i put up with a lot of shit in friendships and i let friendships bring out bad elements of me that i should not indulge in we all have a shadow side so don't act like you don't um and i have a blind spot to that sometimes and it's happened to me where i've then you know stopped being friends with the person as it happens gone to my old friends and they're like jenny like they were horrible they were not a nice person and i haven't seen it so sometimes you just need your old friends to bring you back to reality is what i'm trying to say um also if you have a big old group of people core friends as you said like don't worry if you've got people who will stick with you through ins and outs ups and downs of life that's all you really need i'm not saying don't make more friends because obviously you're gonna fall into positions in life where you make friends but 
you know, don't take it too much on yourself is what I'm saying. If you have kept friends for a long time, for a long time, because just because one person doesn't want to be your friend doesn't mean that you're a bad person. You could just be seeking people that aren't a good match for you. It's like a relationship, you know? That's what I'd say. Ask your friends. Be like, am I a fucking weirdo? Like, am I really that hard to be friends with? And they might be like, no, you're fine. What the hell? And you might feel fine about it. Or they might give you some tips on things to work on, which could be humbling. Okay. Thanks for watching this YouTube video. Hopefully I'll be back soon if my little idea for a series works out. If I continue to be, um, what's the word? Inspired in this way. But who knows? Bye.